in the previous video we looked at deadlocks, maybe as you can check up top, uh, and we noticed that if we lock the same mutex in the same thread twice, one after the other without unlocking it, then we're going to get a deadlock. So here we have the same code here, um, we'll just have a lock on the fuel variable and I increment it to 50 and that's it. If I lock it twice, for whatever reason, we're just gonna get nothing printed on the screen. Simply, eh, it's just gone <laughs> and uh, nothing works anymore. Now, there is a solution to this. We can actually lock the same mutex in the same thread multiple times without getting a deadlock, but we have to set some attributes to the mutex itself. Remember when we looked at pthread create, we passed in as a second uh, argument some attributes? Well, with pthread mutex in it, you can do the same, but for mutexes and with different attributes. Uh, to do so, we're gonna have to create the pthread, it's mutex attr underscore t, that's the type of the variable, and then we can say here, uh, let's say recursive mutex. That is what is called a mutex that can be called uh, can be locked multiple times inside the thread. It's called a recursive mutex. And here, what we can do to set it recursive, we're gonna have to say pthread mutex attr init first. So I'm gonna init the recursive mutex attributes, and then I guess I should call it recursive mutex attributes because it's not actually a, mu a mutex itself. It's just the attributes of the mutex that we're creating here. And then pthread mutex attr set and it is the type. So we're gonna set the type here, we're gonna pass in that recursive mutex and we're gonna say pthread mutex. And here there are all sorts of uh, types you can give it. So you can give it normal recursive and there's also the error check one, which we're gonna take a look at a later time. But now the recursive uh, mutex, we just have to give it this property. So set the type of the <laughs> attributes to be recursive and then pass these attributes here as the second attribute to the mutex in it. So I'm gonna pass in here the uh, recursive mutex attributes to this guy. And of course, once we have uh, initialized this, we also have to call destroy on this mutex attr object. So I'm gonna go down here and right after we print, for example, the fuel, we can simply say pthread uh, mutex attr destroy and call it on the recursive mutex attributes. Now these attributes could actually be uh, destroyed right after creating the thread, but right now we're just gonna destroy it right at the end of the program. Nothing wrong with that. And now if we launch this, remember when you first launched it, nothing was printed on the screen. Now if we try to launch this, you're gonna notice that we do get in fact at least one message and that is the first thread that gets to lock the, the recursive mutex. So the first thread, what it did was lock the mutex once, it locked it a second time successfully this time, it uh, incremented, it printed something on the screen and then it unlocked it only once. Now here's the issue right now. See, we're not printing anything else on the screen. That is because with recursive locks, you're gonna have to always unlock the mutex the same number of times you have locked it. So here, because we're locking it twice, we're gonna also have to unlock it twice, no matter what. Otherwise, the code is not gonna be valid and it's gonna, again, create a deadlock where this uh, one thread that got to lock the mutex didn't unlock it and no other thread has access to it. Now, if we try to launch this, we should be on the clear and we should have the same code running, but with the mutex actually actually locked twice. And we can really have it even more times if we want, as long as we have the same number of unlocks. So if we have five here and five here, that's gonna work perfectly. But this only applies to uh, the same thread, right? So if you, unlock, if you lock it once on the thread, the other threads are not gonna be able to lock it as well. So that's going to be only specific to that thread. And if another thread calls unlock on that mutex, nothing changes. It's going to have to be the same number of unlocks, oh, the same number of unlocks as locks in the same thread. Okay. So 
basically this attribute, this recursive mutex recursive gives the mutex a counter that counts up to whatever number of locks you have and then it counts down to zero and only if it comes back to zero then it's considered unlocked and it can be locked by other threads. Now what you can do with these uh, mutexes is kind of nice if you for example want to create a multi-threaded program that uses recursive functions you might at some point have to actually lock um, a certain mutex inside a recursive function and uh, that would be quite impossible if you couldn't lock it multiple times because you would you would lock and then you would uh, do something to the uh, shared memory and maybe call uh, the function recursively again before unlocking and then do that lock again so you lock it as many times as you need but then when the function returns, every single time it returns, it unlocks it properly. So you only have one lock and one unlock, but because the function is recursive, you're gonna actually lock it multiple times. So that is how you actually deal with this stuff. Now, one more thing to note, just because this can uh, lock and unlock multiple times, this is not at all the same thing as a semaphore, as we'll see in later uh, lessons, right? This mutex can only be locked and then unlocked by the same thread. You cannot have it be locked once by a thread and unlocked by another thread, which we could have with semaphores. Okay, I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, leave them down in comments below or on our Discord server. Again, the source code is going to be found on our website. Link in the description below. Take care. Bye.